we start asking Q's and A's, questions and answers here. She holds the World Karate Association title. She also holds the International Women's Boxing Association title mm -hmm. in the Bantamweight division. She has a bachelor's degree in pre-law from... Um, UCSB. Santa Barbara, of course. Right. And a master's in education of psychology. Is that what it's called? Educational psychology. At Cal Lutheran. Cal Lutheran. Why? In the recent, reading the information about you, you stated that as a child you were not interested in sports. For someone who was not interested in sports and gets involved with martial arts and professional boxing, that's, I mean, that's uh, 180 degrees there. Some people don't think so. <laughs> well, why? Well, you know, to tell you why I got involved in martial arts in the beginning, there was sort of a lot of reasons, and actually it's not really that interesting, but, you know, what's more interesting to me now is, is you know, my reason for deciding to become a world champion or, or getting involved in a contact sport. Martial arts is sort of, you know, common, but for a woman to become involved in contact sport isn't. What you're trying to say is that one time you were involved with the Catholic Church, uh, some youth uh, gang kind of uh, organization or something like that? Well, I was a student leader, and I had organized a group, and we just started a martial arts class. So I said that's, you know, been so long ago. That there, were, there were a lot of reasons initially why, I got, you know, why I started studying the martial arts. But eventually, it became something very important to me, you know, pursuing it and for me to spend seven years of my life doing it, you know. And it's so, it's so hard, and the discipline that's required to be a, quote, professional karate um, uh, displayer, I don't know what you would call them, and also a boxing champion, the discipline that's required to, to be involved in those two professions. Right, but at, you know, at a certain point, even as I was doing my undergraduate work, I worked for a police department, and I was really frustrated because I, I was sort of shocked to see like, women who had been uh, mistreated or raped, you know, to discover that, you know, the frustrations and all that they had gone through. And at that point, I was, I was already teaching martial arts. So, you know, I decided that, you know, jumping into the ring and fighting full contact to the knockout would be a way for me to to see whether what I was teaching you know was good and you know and I discovered that some of what I was teaching really worked but more importantly I discovered that some of it didn't work therefore you know uh, boxing and kickboxing and I uh, sort of became a, a a place where I modified my teaching technique what's rougher kickboxing I mean on the body kickboxing or just straight boxing getting hit <laughs> well i know that but you get hit both ways uh, that's the problem there, when you're, there when you're are kickboxing. more injuries in boxing because it's a lot harder to use four things four tools your hands and your feet as opposed to just your hands because when you box you're really concentrated on just the hands right mm -hmm. but kickboxing since you also wear pads on your feet and it's more of a sport um you're less likely to be injured At the beginning of this segment or the beginning of the show, we showed a film with regard to what took place in Las Vegas. I understand right. the lady never came back for the second round. Why? Well, in, in that case, unfortunately, um, I say it was a bit of a mismatch. My p original opponent was injured in her training, so they put her in. And she had less experience than I had. She had a lot of heart, and she was really, um, she had the desire to be in the ring, but I sort of overpowered her. And I was an, a lot stronger fighter than she was. So when I kicked her and fractured her rib, obviously she didn't answer the second round. You said uh, that when you started out boxing in 1979, even though you've been involved with martial arts since 1973, but right. uh, kickboxing and boxing since 1979, you said that when you got involved professionally, they did not have any divisions for women at that time. So there were, at times, you would reach, you would meet somebody who can overpower you or somebody sure. way under your, uh, what? Well, that's just part of the problems with the sport. You know, as far as women being involved, it's a new sport. And at the time that I began, even uh, prior to being a professional boxer, I was an amateur full contact karate fighter, which is kickboxing. And there were no weight divisions. Um, it was finally the organization, the WKA, finally implemented weight divisions and started. they started noticing us because there were more of us. But prior to that, I fought, I'm a bantamweight, which is 118, and I'd have to fight somebody that weighed 145 pounds. And when you do this, when you, when you fight somebody that weight, if you had to, how do you train for it, knowing for all that person outweighs you by 30 pounds? Well, you just have to train uh, knowing that, you know, you have to develop your skill. And that, you know, even when I teach, like, that brings me to a good point. My whole theory of teaching 
working with women and with other, not just women, but mainly I push this issue with women. It doesn't have anything to do with how big you are, how strong you are. And I use these fights as an example. I've never lost a fight, but yet I have fought women that weighed 145 pounds while I weighed 118. So the point is that if you learn to, to develop your skill and learn your, to use your body as a tool, power is only one element. Mm -hmm. So as a smaller opponent, I had to learn to develop my skill. You know, learn how to angle, how to use technique. And, you know, and so when I teach, that's what, what I really emphasize. Not only that, like the martial arts that I teach were both arts that were founded by women. So they're very scientific martial you arts. You better mention who these women are in case somebody's out yeah. there saying, come on, tell <laughs> come me about on. it. No, um, I study Filipino Kali, K-A-L-I. Uh, the word actually means goddess of destruction, but it's a martial art from the Philippines. And the other art is Wing Chun. And Wing Chun was also founded by a Chinese nun 500 years ago, mm -hmm. Wing Chun. And both of these arts are, are great because they stress, um, it's very scientific movement, in other words, angling. And well, we're going to find that out. <laughs> you uh, did something for us earlier before we taped the show, a demonstration of Kali. Right. And uh, why don't we see that tape and maybe you can talk about it uh, when we come back. Great. Mm -hmm. Under some music, what's the name of the song? Eye of the Tiger, Eye of course. <laughs> What about the, the uh... What you're seeing here is, is more the artistic aspect of the art, just to show what the art is about. Mm-hmm. It must be very tiresome. Well, it is. See, this particular art was hidden in dance for hundreds of years in the Philippines. Therefore, we have the artistic aspect of it. But every movement that you learn, even with the sword that I'm doing, he applied a sword. And actually, a self-defense movement. And our women... Uh... I mean, can they do exactly what you're doing without a lot of studying? Oh, and, uh... sure, because both of these arts, especially the first I mentioned, was designed to teach someone in a short amount of time. So most of us don't have 10 years to dedicate to learning an art. Therefore, I've also modified the system so that it takes, you know, three to six months to learn you enough. You teach senior citizens, too, I understand. I teach senior citizens. I... I like teaching women, but I, I teach, <laughs> I don't discriminate. <laughs> you teach old men like me, too, then, oh. huh? <laughs> That's a beautiful demonstration. Uh, Kali. That's, that was Kali. And, and it, uh, it's uh, from the Philippines. From the Philippines. The Wing Chun, actually, what I, that I teach has been modified. My instructor, Danny Inosanto, was Bruce Lee's uh, disciple and training partner for over 10 years. So as a result of that, we have a combination of Bruce Lee's system and, and the Kali, which is a Filipino art. You know, you we've been